Hi, Mary Romanowski here again, and in this video, we're going to go through an introduction to ingredient nomenclature, specifically naming cosmetic raw materials. Now, I know a lot of you might already know this information, but this is generally geared towards people just starting out in the industry, or maybe people that have been in the industry for a little while and still don't have any clue about what these raw material names really mean. Let's get started. So the objective in this video is to provide just a quick primer on the naming of cosmetic raw materials. And specifically, we're going to answer how raw materials get their names, what the raw material names mean, and probably most important, where you can get more information about them. But hopefully you'll get a good sense of what's important when it comes to names and have an idea of what the names actually mean. A chemical nomenclature is a thing that's often taught in first year chemistry, or it's introduced in first year chemistry, but really it's organic chemistry, which is in second year, where it really becomes important. And here you learn how to name ethers and alcohols and acids, all of these different organic names. The system that's used uh, in college chemistry is the IUPAC system, which refers to the International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry. In the cosmetic industry, we don't use the IUPAC. Instead, we use a thing called the INCI Dictionary. The INCI Dictionary is put together by the PCPC. This is the Personal Care Products Council, uh, and it's the trade association in the United States, which is the self-regulating body of the cosmetic industry. This INCI Dictionary, being international, is also recognized by governments around the world. So the names of ingredients there will carry over worldwide. So there are a bunch of major raw material classes of ingredients used in cosmetics. These include alcohols, acids, esters, uh, nitrogen containing compounds uh, with names like amides and amines. Then there's silicones, polymers, natural ingredients like herbal extracts, and other naturally derived materials. Then colors and preservatives also round out the different types of ingredients used in cosmetics. We'll go through some of these and how some of these get their names. This chart here is a very important one when it comes to the naming of cosmetic compounds. If you look on the left side, there's a thing that says main chain. And much of the naming of cosmetic raw materials is related to the number of carbons in their molecule backbone. So if the main chain has 8 or 10 or 12 carbons, there's going to be a different stem name for the raw material. In the IUPAC system, which you learned in college, um, the stem names are specifically designed so that you would know from the stem name and other things about the raw material name you could eventually figure out what the structure is. The IUPAC is excellent for figuring out structure. But for fitting on the back of a uh, shampoo bottle or a skin lotion bottle, the IUPAC names are just too long. The INCI uses a simpler system, um, so the names are shorter. But they still use uh, the stem names, they just use different ones. For example, If the carbon, if the molecule has 12 carbons in its backbone, the INCI uses the determination, the word lauric for fatty acids and lauryl for fatty alcohols. Compare this to the, uh, the carbon 12 of the IUPAC system where they say dodecane. Dodecane, the number 12 comes out of that, so you could tell. Lauric, there's really nothing about lauric which would tell you the number 12. You just got to memorize this list, and it would be very, very helpful if you did memorize this list. Let's take an example. So if you're trying to name an alcohol, and specifically this alcohol we're looking at is a C16 alcohol. You can see here C16, H34O. Now under the IUPAC system, this material would be known as 1-hexadecanol. Hexadecanol. Um, refers to the 16, 
and the OL at the end stands for the alcohol. The one is just a designation of where uh, the OH group is. So from one hexadecanal, you could easily get the structure or the number of uh, carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens in the molecule. However, in the ISCI system, the molecule is simply called cetyl alcohol. Now, if we head back to this chart, you can see the number C16, if you look under the alcohols, you see cetyl, cetyl refers to C16. So we know cetyl is in the name. And to simply finish it off, you call it cetyl alcohol. Whenever you name an alcohol, the last word is an alcohol. Now, things would be easy in this industry if you just had to know the INCI name, but raw material suppliers actually like to come up with their own names. Uh, when they're selling their raw materials. So, in addition to cetyl alcohol, the same material might be called cetanol HP or lipocol C. It just depends on the raw material supplier that's delivering it. If you know the INCI names of raw materials, however, you're going to be in good shape. In the cosmetic industry, it's rare that you use a raw material that is a pure material. And for that reason, many of the names are, are source-derived names. Mainly, the source of the starting raw materials that eventually makes the end raw material is somehow incorporated into the name. This chart gives you a good sense of the distribution of the fatty acids in the oils used to produce many of common cosmetic products. Coconut oil is probably the most common one, and you can see the distribution of the fatty acids in this one. Most specifically, you can see fat, uh, coconut oil is made up of, of almost 50%, 48% of C12s. Um, it's got some C14s, which is about 19%, and then it's distributed under the C16s, some C18s, etc. It's, it's readily abundant, so many raw materials are based on coconut oil. Another common one is palm oil, where it's, much of it is C16. So the raw materials with C16 are usually based on palm oil. Uh, then we have soybean oil with this distribution. Uh, tallow is a, a good source of oleic. And then you have sunflower, which is a good source of oleic and linoleic. These five oil sources represent a big slice of the raw material uh, sources uh, in the cosmetic industry. And of course, in addition to these, um, petrochemicals are also used to create cosmetic raw materials. Some examples of the source-derived ingredient names is something like sodium cochil sulfate or cocomidopropyl betaine. You can see here that the, the cocoa part refers to coconut oil. Oil. Here's the name dimethyl soyamine, which is a derived from uh, soybean oil, so thus the soy. And finally, something derived from sunflower oil would be sunflower amide MEA. You can see the name of the source is right in there. Unfortunately, from there you can't really get a sense of what the raw material uh, structure is, but it gives you a good sense of the fatty acid distribution that you're using. You're going to also find nitrogen-containing compounds in cosmetic uh, ingredients, and anywhere you see the word amide or amine, you know it's a nitrogen-containing compound. An example is cocomide DEA, and of course there could be others. There's uh, soy amide DEA, etc. Uh, but these nitrogen-containing compounds are often used in conditioning products, and we'll talk about them in depth later on in this program. Polymers are also used. Uh, here's polyquaternium-44. Now, the number here is really arbitrary, and it's just related to when a polymer was registered with the INCI. So there's nothing about the name here that would be able to give you any information about the structure, except that it's a quaternized polymer. And when I say quaternized, that just means it's positively charged. Silicones are also used, and the key to look out for in a silicone is if you see the word cone, C-O-N-E, in a raw material, 
it's very likely that it contains some type of silicone. So you have cyclomethicone, dimethicone, or phenyl trimethicone. These are all just examples of silicone containing materials. Also in the cosmetic naming uh, dictionary, you're going to find lots of acronyms. Uh, we've talked about DEA, which stands for diethylamine, uh, PEG stands for polyethylene glycol, etc. In fact, if you looked at Chemist Corner, you could find a listing of a hundred or more industry acronyms that might be incorporated into cosmetic ingredient names. Over time, you'll just learn these things and you'll know what they are, but maybe right now you, you won't. You'll have to just look them up. Colorants also have a special uh, way of naming them, and it's actually pretty, pretty simple. They take a complicated name like the IUPAC name for this molecule at the top, which would be 6-6-prime, 1-4-anthroquino, etc. Uh, and they just simplify that and call it Green 5. Um, again, Green 5 doesn't give you any good information about the structure. However, you can look up the structure and it does fit up nicely on an ingredient label. Finally, a lot of raw materials were used commonly before the INCI name uh, system was created. And these things just retain their common names. So ingredients like water, lanolin, menthol, beeswax, tea tree oil, were all just called those names. And so to figure out what's uh, the structure of these ingredients, and actually the structures for many of these is very complicated, uh, you'll just have to look that up in uh, the INCI dictionary. Finally, that one at the end, carbomer, that was a trade name of a thickening polymer that just eventually became the, the common name. And so carbomer, which was originally produced by B.F. Goodrich, is now the INCI designation of an acrylate thickener polymer. Now for more information about this topic, you really have to go look at the ctfa-online.org uh, and if you're a member of the PCPC, or your company is, then you'll be able to look at the INCI dictionary online. It's actually uh, a quite a helpful uh, uh, source because it'll give you information about uh, not only the raw material name and the structure, but also safety information and use information. However, it can be kind of expensive to be part of the CTFA, and it's uh, a part of the PCPC, sorry. but there's a new service that started called the INCI Directory produced by special4chem.com. I put a, a simplified link here to the INCI Directory and this will provide you information about any ingredient that's in the CTFA uh, or the INCI Dictionary uh, except you don't have to pay for it. So this is a great service provided by them online and you should really take advantage of it. So that's all about cosmetic nomenclature. I hope they give you a flavor of what some of these uh, materials mean and how you might find information about the cosmetic ingredients. If you have any specific questions, feel free to leave a comment below or contact me directly. I'm Perry Romanowski, and I thank you for listening.